The Curse of Salem. Accused and threatened, what is she to do? Her heartbeat quickens. She knows it won't be long. Didn't even get the chance to say goodbye. Tears roll down her cheeks. She turns to the corner cowardly. The cold chains tighten. Was this all worth it? She thinks back to months ago. It was all a joke back then. A playful game of fitting in. Now she is on trial for practicing the devil's magic. So she waits to see what her fate might be. Sweat dripping from her body, she shivers. They are here to take her to Gallows Hill. Falsely accused? We'll never know, because her last words were cut off by a twisted rope. Hey guys, welcome to Paranormal XL. I am Gigi, and with me for always is... Mary. No. Mama Mary. <laughs> I'm like, no, it isn't just Mary. Hey guys, this is an episode that we've been wanting to do for, for a while. A long yes. time. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, okay, we're doing this episode this week in honor of Mary getting to do something without me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound like this. You make it sound like it's a reward. <laughs> I'm very butthurt about this, but we do have a trip planned to where she is going because my dad wants to be like a good guy and take her before. For the anniversary. Yeah, what yeah. a... <laughs> anniversary, sm anniversary, whatever. The anniversaries are for schmucks. Losers. <laughs> but we will get our chance to go out there together to experience yeah. some awesome things. We know the places we want to go, the people we want to talk to. We know mm -hmm. what we're going to do when we go out there. She's going to go ahead and make sure it's safe for me to go out there. That's how I'm putting myself to sleep at night when you're gone. Putting yourself into a happy place? Yes. She's going to make sure it's safe for me before <laughs> I get out there. Make sure that they're ready to handle all of me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Prepare them. <laughs> so, so this week, yay, we are discussing <sighs> Salem Witch Trials. I know. Oh, it's like yay. going back home. Yeah. Word. I know. Word. So, <laughs> when, as we're starting this, the reason that we're so excited about this, I'm going to let Mary tell this, because um, it's super excited. As our listeners should know, the ones that have listened all along, um, she is my stepmother. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we're family, and it's great. We have a great relationship. Uh, it, it's wonderful. It is. Um, even though we're, like, completely opposite, but at the same time, like... The same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, here is our story. Like, our, like the little backstory to it? Yes, the backstory as to why we are excited about this episode. Yeah, so it was like a, about a year and a half ago, had a past life reading Sweet. with um, Bonnie Robinson. So, if you guys are looking for a past life reading, uh, Bonnie's in Portland and she will blow your mind. She is dead on and she's amazing. So with that being said, in that reading, she had told me that my name now was the same name that I'd had in a past life. And so I didn't really think anything, you know, much of it. And I was telling my sister, and she had sent me a message after that saying that, you know, did you know that there was a Mary Bassett that was per persecuted in the Salem Witch Trials? I didn't think too much of it. I kind of just ignored it. And then I was talking um, one day to my well, to your dad and mm -hmm. to my daughter, Jocelyn. And so she looked it up and she's like, no, mom, there there really was a Mary Bassett. And there was a Sarah Bassett, too. So I'm like, no way. So I started search, you know, researching it and there it really was. And it was kind of creepy when he pulled up the Mary Bassett picture because it, it does look similar mm -hmm. to actually both of us. Yes, and, uh, it does. So that was a little bit more creepy. Kind of put that back in a way a little bit and mm -hmm. ignored it. And a couple of weeks later... Your dad was talking about how he had done a family lineage, and mm -hmm. that they had tra they chased the, the family back from w way back to England, and he pulled out the family crest. And so, starting to research that, it is the same exact family crest. So, the Mary Bassett and the Sarah Bassett that were persecuted in the Salem Rich Trials 
their family. And it's us. It is. <laughs> it is I, us. It is. I truly feel like it is definitely us in a past life. We just life. switched roles. Yeah. Because Mary, as now, is my mom. Sarah, I am the daughter. But in the witch trials, Sarah was the mom. Yeah. Mary was the daughter. Well, it would explain why we get along so well. For it one. Would. It yeah. would. It would. It was kind of like lost souls once we, you know, yeah. connected and whatnot. And it's yeah. a, it's a it's a pretty fascinating and, story, especially you know finding out that the you know, and she that is the family lineage, right? And you didn't tell me this right after you got that reading or anything because we really didn't become super close until recently. Yeah, and it, we never hated each other. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But hanging out more. Yes, and a lot of that does have to do with the podcast, whatever. But even before we discussed starting the podcast, you did bring it up to me, but it was a long time after getting that reading. Oh yeah, and yeah, it was quite I a long time ago. You know. I never made it known that I was interested in witches and such and that whole backstory with them. And then she's like, no way, listen to this. I'm like, shut up. And then she took me over to meet Bonnie. I got to meet Bonnie. Uh-huh. I've hung out with her a few times because we don't live that far from each other. And it, it's just a really cool story. And then I got researching the backstory and stuff as well. And I'm just like, Holy well, shit. What's, what's fascinating so is all the names in the family lineage are the same names uh-huh. as now. Uh-huh. Just yeah. in a different way. It, but, but they're all there. Yes. I, you know, I totally believe in past lives. And uh, I get that validation only because she told me my name is the same exact the same exact as it was in a past life. And I believe that the universe unfolds for certain reasons and shows you certain things so you can learn. It's a karmic history. Mm-hmm. So going out, you know to Salem, not only will we be researching the family history, but it's it's like going back home. Mm-hmm. It really is. It, it's pretty Whatever. cool. It's exciting. Whatever. Wh- whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's the, my brother Mike. He went out, was it last year? Yeah, last October. Which He's was the weird. one that started all of this. Because he, as funny as he is, I never would have thought that he, he have an had. In it? Yeah an interest into going to Salem and I'm like what the hell for like he didn't know anything about your reading or anything either it, yeah right and he's always been really interested in Ireland too but where does he go three four times a year Vegas like he does travel but it's to like Vegas <laughs> yeah. you know and, yep. and so it was kind of when he told me that him and his roommate were going out to say I'm like what what first of all you're it not taking sissy at all. yeah and I'm like <laughs> That's a me and Mary trip. Like, what are you doing going there? I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool. But something pulled him out there, and he he knows that Mary and I want to go there. So when he came back, he did say he wants to take us out there because there mm-hmm. are spots that he wants to make sure that we get to see. So yeah. we are planning a trip of going out there, and we will document the whole thing so you guys can all go with us. You know, whether you are just have an interest in the witch trials and stuff, it'd just be a really cool experience, I think. Mm-hmm. So I... Well, just I'm still super just, jealous. Just thinking about it, it's it's just energizing. And yeah, well, because the funny thing is, I was teasing Mike the other day, and uh, because I, because back then Mary Bassett married Michael DeRich, mm-hmm. and she became DeRich, and I said, "What the what the hell is wrong with you guys?" <laughs> just because it was funny. Oh yeah, but, yeah. You know, but it is. It's um. Very intriguing, a very powerful time, a very sad time. Yes. Uh, a fascinating time. Very much so. Just the whole history, just not our history or our link back to the Salem Witch Trials, but the whole, the thing as a whole, the whole witch hunt during that time. But it was very, very sad. Well, I'm looking forward to go to the Proctor house mm-hmm. because, Eliz- you know, Elizabeth Proctor was very big in the witch trials, but she was a Bassett. Until okay. she married a proctor. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's 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 a huge tie, not only in you know the family history, but in past life history. Mm-hmm. It it's it's it feels like going out there to find a piece of yourself that's always been missing, like a full cycle. Yes. So to See, speak. When I get to go out there, when we get to go out there, mm, they're not even going to know what hit them and say. They're probably going to kick us out of town. <laughs> Oh, they're going to chase us out with like pitchforks. A, and... Oh, shit, they're back. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Oh, no. I know, my headstone's out there. I, yeah, I, I'm going to have to find it. Yes, I'll, I'll send you the link where I found it or whatever and see if you can find the cemetery that it's at. For the Mary Bass, I'm going to have to go to New Haven, Connecticut. Connecticut's beautiful, too. Hmm. If you, if you can't talk to Adam, go on 
taking a drive out there one of the days. We'll put that in our road trip, which we will probably take Dan on anyway, because he is a good driver. Yeah, and he's safe. We want to do things and look out the window when we're driving. You might want to drink wine. Uh, yeah. yeah so it's yeah, just and we need to record saying. too. So yeah, he yeah. So they're just going out there to make sure it's safe for me. Yeah, we're gonna check it out. <laughs> make sure they're it. prepared, so when they get Mary and Sarah at the same time, whoa, they'll be ready. Yes. <laughs> Nobody's ready for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> there is a lot of history that goes in, clearly, with the Salem Witch Trials. So, some of the a brief history of what I got. The Salem Witch Trials occurred in co- colonial Massachusetts. <laughs> Still can't say it. <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> Which, I don't mean any offense to that to people no, that live in, just... in the mass. Uh True. I just can't say it. Like, that's not a that can. And that's sort of like trying to say hospital or helicopter. Or ambulance, because yeah. I have a hard time saying that. There's a couple of, there's a lot of words that I can't <laughs> say. But Massachusetts <laughs> is a lovely place. I Like I said, I don't mean to disrespect it by not being able to say it, because I want to visit it. I think it's very beautiful. But between 1692 and 1693, more than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft, the devil's magic. And 20 were executed. (sighs) Now, magic isn't always the devil. The magic, there's so many different levels of magic. Oh, yeah. I think. That's how I perceive it when I research the magic. There's, (laughs) like... There is the dark magic. Well, definitely. There's dark and everything, um, but there's also rituals that aren't necessarily magic, but people just, can, they, they throw that in to the magic pool, mm-hmm. and it's not, the rituals yeah. aren't so much magic. But anyway, eventually the colony admitted the trials were a mistake and compensated the families of those convicted. See, how are you going to compensate taking somebody's life? That's, that's very you true. You just can't. Since then, the story of the trials has become synonymous with paranoia and injustice and continues to bejewel the popular imagination more than 300 years later. It'll always be around. That story will always be around. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a, you know, scar... I guess it's a weird way to put it, like scar tissue on the land. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something that happened. 20 executed. I believe there was more, but because you got to figure a lot of them weren't or if not just in Salem though that whole thing started b- back across seas before mm-hmm. we were even established it was here. And the, but the, the funny thing and is that's, that's why started. you know the protestants left in the first place was to have freedom of religion so when you come over to the states and you have women a lot of these women were healers and uh, like what was that um bridget bishop she was a midwife mm-hmm. and they hung her that's, yeah. you know, just because she was a healer and she did it differently. Yes. And she spoke out. It, it, people couldn't explain certain things. So instead of trying to figure it out, figure it out, nope, we're going to hang you because mm-hmm. you're a witch. Yeah. And that's, witches are not bad. Not all witches are bad. There are plenty of Glinda witches out there. Well, just, you know, like we said before, just like with anything, you have good and bad it doesn't matter what it is well that's essentially what makes the world go around otherwise if we were all good as much as i want us to be all good we'd have a pretty boring life we would never grow yes Mm -hmm. we need those bad things to try to figure out how to get past them you know how to grow how to learn we're learning so several centuries ago uh practicing christians and those of other religions had a strong belief that the devil could give certain people known as witches the power to harm others in return for their loyalty. Lie. I'm going to call straight up bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because again, spirituality has been out there longer than religions. People are just closed-minded. They always have been, always will be. This goes to show that it happened even back in 1692. You know, it, they weren't open to spirituality. So when people spoke of that or tried to practice that, they just assumed it was the devil. It was different. The different made it bad. Different is not bad. Being different is not bad. 
For me, I would think that if the devil was involved, it would be taking over the people and instilling fear mm -hmm. so that they would hang innocent people. Because, yeah, what, what is it? They always say the real witches were the ones that didn't get hung. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Which, you know, Mary and Sarah Bassett were the ones, and Elizabeth Proctor, mm -hmm. were one of the couple that were released. Yes. Yes. Um, we'll get into that. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I see. A witchcraft craze rippled through Europe in the 1300s to end the, to the end of the 1600s. See, that's why I was saying it came from across these. It came from Europe. You know, it, it traveled over. Um, tens of thousands of supposed witches, mostly women, were executed. Though the Salem trials came on just as the European craze was winding down and local circumstances explained their onset. In 1689, English rulers William and Mary started a war with France and the American colonies, known as King William's War to the Colonists. It ravaged regions of upstate New York, Nova Scotia, and Quebec, sending refugees into the county of Essex and specifically Salem Village in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. <clears throat> the displaced people created a strain of Salem's resources. This aggravated the existing rivalry between families with ties to the wealth of the port of Salem and those who still depended on agriculture. Controversy also brewed over Reverend Samuel Paris who became Salem's village, Salem Village's first ordained minister in 1689 and was disliked because of his rigid ways and greedy nature. The Puritan villagers believed all the quarreling was the work of the devil. See, anything bad that happened, they just was like, it's they the devil. They just chalked it up to that. Yeah. Well, I, they, they give a number here, like in the 15th and 18th centuries over in Europe, over like it gives a number of like between forty thousand and fifty thousand people were accused of witchcraft, so, but until like fourteen twenty, witchcraft related persecutions in Europe they really centered around the idea of using supernatural powers specifically to harm others because they they back then actually believed in magic, but they believed that there was the, you know a difference between both. It, and it just kind of escalated from there when it came over here into the the colonies. So they took it to a different level. Right. Like it was the devil's work because of Christian, you know, the Puritans and Christianity versus it just being um an energy. Mm -hmm. It turned into because they couldn't explain where it was coming from. Yeah. So, uh, going on to this, Reverend Paris. Uh, January of uh, 1692, his daughter Elizabeth, which was age 9 at the time, and niece Abigail Williams, age 11, started having fits. They screamed, threw things, uttered particular sounds, and contorted themselves onto strange positions, and a local doctor blamed supernatural. See, <sighs> possession, possession. Mm -hmm. See, no, I don't think it was possession. They probably have what we call learning disability nowadays or ADHD or any of those onset things that we have been able to mm -hmm. put a name to. Like, a lot of kids are medicated for them. They just started acting different. Right. So they're like, nope, bad. Mm -hmm. No, it has nothing to do with the devil. Like, and they're young. They're still in their innocence. Like, yeah. They just assume pre -puberty the worst. Time, You know, like, holy crap. Another girl, Ann Putnam, age 11, experienced similar episodes. On February 29th, under pressure from magistrates Jonathan Corwin and John Hawthorne, the girls blamed three women for afflicting them. Uh, Tibeta, the Paris uh, Caribbean slave, Sarah Good, a homeless beggar, and Sarah Osborne, an elderly, impoverished woman. So they believe that these three women... Mm -hmm. Because they were do this, yes, because they were witches. Yeah. You know that they were given that label. Which, what? Well, no, these kids probably just needed a spanking. Honestly, <laughs> they were naughty. Put them in a corner. Put them in timeout. What have you? Yeah. Back then, we 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 didn't have all the answers that we do nowadays. Because otherwise, everybody would be a witch. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh my gosh, the devil making you do this. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. See, I personally don't believe that there's a devil. I believe there's a hell. Doesn't necessarily need a ruler. I, I believe it, there's darkness. Definitely. Yes. 
you know, and it's, it's the devil. No, what? Have you seen him? No. Huh? Huh. Paranormal was such a huge thing back then, they just didn't have a label for it. Yeah. Anything dark, they just put to the devil. It was easier yeah. that way. I, I don't know. I, I feel so bad for us <laughs> back then because we we couldn't provide explanation. We were never given the the chance to explain. Yes, how it really was. Yes, exactly. All right, so you, I'm like, you yes, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm still back in the 1600s. I see yeah, no. some stuff from the 1700s there. So the witch hunt began. All three women were brought before the local magistrates and integrated for several days. Interrogated, sorry. A question for several days. Starting on March 1st, 1692, Osborne claimed innocence, at, as did Good. But Tipita confessed, the devil came to me and bid me to serve him. She described elaborate images of black dogs, red cats, yellow birds, and a black man who wanted her to sign his book. She admitted that she signed the book and said there were several other witches looking to destroy the Puritans. All three women were put in jail. Okay, that man may have just wanted to sell you an extended warranty on your windows. Well, maybe. <laughs> Either that or, you know, she was the servant of it. What was that? The, was the priest? Who was the, she the Tibeta? She was the servant. He, you know, They say oh, that yeah. he made her do that. Mm -hmm. Made her say that to give him evidence. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't believe that's what happened to her. I believe she was innocent. Mm -hmm. I, I firmly do. But pressure back then worked. They worked from your, your owners, or you know, if you're a servant, you had an owner. Um, well, who do you, who do you turn to for support if you're homeless? Right, exactly. I just. They it's pick, sad. They pick the easy ones that they, you know. Oh, for sure. They could take the, out I, any, all the ones that that were considered witches which is when different. and when and ultimately they, they were just different but they came from not a wealthy or well-known family name at that time mm -hmm. um i'm gonna say with the seed of paranoia planted a stream of accusations followed the next few months charges against martha Corey, a loyal member of the church in salem village greatly concerned the community if she could be a witch then anyone could see again she was well known it was at, you know, if we're going to call her one, then anybody could nope. be. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean. It's like mass uh, hysteria. Yes. Magistries even questioned Sarah Good's four-year-old daughter, Dorothy. Um, and her timid answers were construed as confession. How sad is that? Mm-hmm. She's four. The Diary of Dorgas Good, March 23rd, 1692. Today they arrested me. I was accused of practicing witchcraft, something I've only seen done, something I would never know how to exactly do. My mother is a witch. Maybe that's what I'm accused of too, but as I sit here in this jail, I know I will probably die. That is a lot for a young girl to comprehend, yet it is something I have come to terms with. My family is poor. My mother, a beggar, and my father, greedy. He will do anything for money. They wouldn't miss me. Besides, my mother should be gone sooner than I, especially after I testify against her. She was the one of the first to be accused. They thought her begging and asking for money was a sign of Satan, and who knows, maybe it was. I think she is just a poor crazy woman who can't help her family. I wonder if she has ever cast spells on me or our family. Sometimes I swear, I hear her whisper strange words that I don't understand. All I can hear is the cries of the other children like me who have also been accused of participating in these evil actions. I want to cry too, but hold back my tears. I am much stronger than that. Crying won't help me get out of here or change my fate. It makes me look weak, and if I am anything, weak is not it. The questioning got more serious in April when Deputy Governor Thomas Danforth and his assistants attended the hearings. Dozens of people from Salem and other Massachusetts villages were brought in for questioning. On May 27, 16. 92, Governor William Phillips ordered the establishment of Special Court of Oyer to hear a terminer to decide for Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties. The first case brought to the Special Court was Bridget Bishop, um, an older woman known for her gossipy habits and <laughs> being promiscuous. <laughs> hey, a girl's just... Hey. Yeah, hey. Just, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, when you need it, you need it. You, you, yeah, what the heck? What the heck? Um, when asked if she committed witchcraft, Bishop responded, I am, a, 
I am as innocent as the child unborn. The defense must not have been convincing because she was found guilty and on June 10th became the first person hanged on what was later called Gallows Hill. Wow, June 10th. So close to my dad's birthday. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's sad. For the, wow. Five days later, respected minister Cotton Mather wrote a letter imploring the court not to allow spectral evidence, testimony about dreams and visions. The court largely ignored this request, and five people were sentenced and hanged in July, five more in August, and eight in September. On October 3rd, following his son's footsteps, increased Mather, then president of Harvard, denounced the use of spectral evidence. It were better that ten suspected witches should escape than one innocent person be condemned. Governor Phipps, in response to Mather's plea and his own wife being questioned for witchcraft, prohibited further arrest, released many accused witches, and dissolved the court of Oyer and Terminer on October 29th. Phipps replaced it with the Superior Court of Judas Kerr, which disallowed spectral evidence and only condemned three out of the 56 defendants. Phipps eventually pardoned all who were in prison on witchcraft charges on May by May 1693, but the damage had been done. Nineteen were hanged on Gallows Hill. A 70-year-old man was pressed to death with heavy stones. Several people died in jail. Governor Phipps, in response to Mather's plea and his own wife being questioned for witchcraft, pro prohibited further arrest, released many accused witches, and dissolved the court. They died in jail, and nearly 200 people overall had been accused of practicing the devil's magic. Restoring good names. Following the trials and executions, many involved, like Judge Samuel Sewall, publicly confessed error and guilt. On January 14, 1697, the general court ordered a day of fasting and soul-searching for the tragedy of Salem. In 1702, the court declared the trials unlawful. And in 1711, the colony passed a bill restoring the rights and good names of those accused and granted um, 600 pounds restitution to their heirs. However, it was not until 1957, more than 250 years later, that Massachusetts formally apologized for the events of 1692. So in 1957, they finally apologized. I got chills. That's mm -hmm. crazy. All those poor families, those poor children. Yeah. Uh, wow. Just because they were different, but we're going to hang you. Mm hmm It's amazing to think back of everything that we know now, because clearly we did not know back then. That, well, man, times you know, they are changing. <laughs> just, a, just a simple thing. You know, there is no separation between church and state, obviously, back then. So, basically... If you didn't go to town meetings and join in on their issues, you could you could automatically become a suspect and be punished for it mm -hmm. just because you didn't believe the way they believed or you didn't agree with what they thought you should agree with. That, that's that's scary. It is so scary. Yeah. Uh, well, the the that type of prejudice still goes on today. It'll never go away. I am happy, however, it's. it's I don't want to say it's not as easy just to be like, hey, we're going to hang you for being this way nowadays. I mean, there's like a whole thing, but just stop. Just just knock it off. Knock the shit off. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't they weren't they claimed that it caused harm to other people, people with the witchcraft that did this. I don't think that those witches were necessarily bad. They're very easily could have been bad witches because there's bad in everything. Uh but I don't think they were, like, you know, going around and damning these young children to do bad things. Yeah, no. And they were just naughty children or had some type of disability that clearly we didn't have knowledge of back then. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, uh, it's sad. It's sad. But the history behind it is absolutely amazing. Now, do you have your story? Because well, I got mine. What I have here <laughs> is I have a whole list of, um, I'd like to just, you know, take the time to appreciate the people yes, who say their name. were involved in it in general. So the people who were, you know, found guilty and executed, you know, Bridget Bishop, 
hung on June June 10, 1692. George Burroughs from Maine. He was hung August 19, 1692. And he was from Andover. It shows, when I read the last part, that's um, the town. Mm -hmm. And then Martha Corey. She was from Peabody, hung on September 22nd, 1692. Mary, Marytown Eastie from Topsfield, hung from sept, in September 22nd, 1692. Dana Michael Foley, September 22nd, 1692. Sarah Poole Good, Salem Village, hung July 19th, 1692. Elizabeth Jackson Howe, hung July 19th, 1692. George Jacob Sr. from Salem Village hung August 19, 1692. Susanna North Martin from Amsbury hung on July 19, 1692. Rebecca Town Nurse, oh, she was a nurse, sorry, from Salem Village hung on July 19, 1692. Alice Parker from Salem Town hung September 22, 1692. Mary Ayer Parker from Andover, hung September 22, 1692. John Proctor from Peabody, hung from August 19, 1692. Anne Greenslit from Salem Town, hung in September 22, 1692. Wilmot Red, Marblehead, hung September 22, 1692. Margaret Stevenson Scott from Rowley, hung in September 22, 1692. Samuel Wardall, Wardall Sr., from Andover was hung on September 22, 1692. John Willard from Salem Village was hung on August 19, 1692. Those who refused to plea and were executed was Giles Corey from Peabody, and he was pressed to death on September 19, oh. 1692. He was the only one that was pressed to death, which means they just kept putting stone on him. It's because he refused to plead guilty. Yeah. So the ones oh, I remember, sorry, I read that months ago, actually, when I was yeah. doing nothing. And, and he's connected to one of the most haunted places. He, they were hoping that he would, they would get a confession out of him. So they kept pressing and pressing and pressing. Mm -hmm. And I do believe he made, he made a statement right before he had died that like, I will not admit to something that I am not guilty of. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why do I know that? I don't know if I even researched that. There's a reason I know that, but I, I remember that. Because he's strongly connected to the, the family. <clears throat> that, that's absolutely, his, his is so sad. I mean, they're all super duper sad, but he went down and not giving them what he wanted. He went down with a fight, and that, that's highly respectable, I think. Okay, so the following, these are the ones who um, were in prison and died in prison. Rebecca Addington, Lydia Dustin, Judge Durant or John Durant, Anne Alcock Foster, Good Infant. I'm so I'm assuming that's just a baby. I'm not sure. Probably. Then Sarah Warren, Prince Osborne, Scargin, uh, Scargin Infant Beverly, Roger Tooth, Toothaker. And then as many as 13 others may have also died in prison, but they don't have mm -hmm. names. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the ones coming up that were found guilty, but escaped. Um, Mary Perskins. She was indicted in prison and then escaped. Captain John Alden. William Barker Sr. Edward Bishop Jr. Sarah Wilds Bishop. Mary, Ho Mary Hollingsworth. English, Philip English, Elizabeth Walker Carey. Now, these ones were accused, imprisoned, and then later released. Arthur C. Abbott, Sarah Hood Bassett, Yee. middle name was Lynn, Mary Black, Hannah Varnum Tyler Brumridge, Andrew Carrier, Richard Carrier, Sar Sarah Carrier, Thomas Carrier Jr., Hannah Carroll, Rachel Hatfield Clinton, Mary Cox, Dane Male Slave, Deliverance Hasteline Dane, Mary Bassett DeRich, you. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Ann Higginson Dolliver, Sarah Dustin, Daniel Eames, Thomas Dyer, 
Edward Farrington, Captain John Floyd, Elizabeth Betts Fats Dick, John Howard, Elizabeth Hutchinson Hart, Abigail Hobbs, Deliverance Hobbs, William Hobbs, John Jackson Jr., John Jackson Sr., Abigail Johnson, Stephen Johnson, Jane Lilly, Sarah Merle, Mary Clemens Osgood, Elizabeth Carrington Payne, Mary Prince Rao, Benjamin Proctor, Sarah Proctor, Sarah Davis Rice, Susanna Roots, Elizabeth Scargen, Mercy Short, Mary Harrington Taylor, Edward Woodland, and then we have um, the ones that were found guilty and pardoned, Abigail Dane Faulkner, Doris Hoare, or Dor Dorcas Hoare, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Johnson Jr., Mary, Mary Post, Elizabeth Bassett Proctor, Sarah Hooper Hawks Wardell, pled, the ones that pled guilty and were pardoned was Rebecca Blake Eames, Mary Foster Lacey Sr., the ones that were accused and not indicted, and then when released was Nemea Abbott, Katrina Biss, Beth, Bethia Carter Jr., Sarah Town Coyce, Mary Dustin Carlson, Rebecca Dyke, Esther Elwell, Thomas Farr, Tatuba Indian, Mary Leach Irison, Sarah Parker, William Proctor, Abigail, Ra Abigail Rao, Margaret Toothaker, Ruth Wolford, and these ones were tried, found not guilty, and then released. Abigail Wheeler Barker, Mary Barker, William Barker Jr., Mary Bridges Jr., Mary Tyler po Post Bridges Sr., Sarah Bridges, Sarah Smith Buckley, Candy, which was a slave of Margaret Hawks, um, Sarah Aslett Cole, Sarah Davis Cole, Eunice Potter Fry, Sarah Hawks Jr., Margaret Jacobs, Rebecca Andrew Jacobs, Rebecca Jacks, Rebecca Fox Jacobs, Elizabeth Dane Johnson, Julie Kildun, Mary Lacey Jr., Mary Osgood Mar Marston, Hannah Post, Susanna Post, Jab Jab Tukey, Mary Ellen Toothaker, Hannah Tyler, Mary Lovett Tyler, Mercy Wardwell, Mary Buckley Wethridge. These ones were accused but never arrested. It was John Buss, Reverend Dance, Sarah Noyes, James Howe, Hezekiah Usher, Mary Spencer Phipps from Boston, and Sarah Clapp Swift. Then Margaret, Margaret Thatcher. Yep, Margaret Thatcher. Huh. Mother-in-law of the magistrate, Jonathan Corwin. Well, of course, they're going to say their mother-in-law's a witch. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, the, they're the first ones to go. <laughs> but there you have it, folks. Yeah. So, just in respect of all those names, and I can only imagine the experiences and the, the, the fear, fear, you know, sitting in, sitting in prison and waiting to see. Well, could you imagine just sitting at home or out by the fire and... and these townspeople come in to get you. You're a witch. You're a witch. Yeah. Like. Throwing stuff at you. Yes. Like. Torturing you. Just because, because you're. Because well, you may they, not they even know. have been different. They just couldn't answer something that they're they needed to answer. People. Yes. They're, they they point And, fingers. you know, there's even research saying that a lot of those names, you notice that they're the same. There is just a lot of them were um, just jealousy. Mm-hmm. Wanted yeah, to yeah. take out the big names. The families. Yeah. It, it wasn't just one person. It, it was, they would go after the whole family. Yeah. Uh, it was just absolutely crazy. The whole thing just, I, yeah, I, and that's where the term witch hunt came from that we use today. It's mm -hmm. a witch hunt, which means. You're, you're, you're basically looking for answers and. Blaming whoever. You're just pointing yeah. fingers yeah. with no evidence. That That's what witch hunt means now. And it's so sad that that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. I think those poor, poor souls that... And the ones that got hung. Like, I couldn't imagine what was going through their head. Well, because a lot of them wouldn't, weren't going to admit, you know, they firmly believed they weren't witches. And they weren't going to admit it because they were afraid that they were going to go to hell. Well, there was only imagine one, the torture? One, well, there was only one that didn't admit it. Either way, they were going to die. So, with that being said, they chose the easy route out, getting hung at that time. You're out like that. Versus that poor gentleman that got stoned, pressed, 
It, it was they wanted him to confess to something that that he wasn't. Or he very well may have been. I don't know. But he wasn't going to tell them because that was the satisfaction that justified them murdering him. That would have justified it without the justification. Because that's what it was. That was murder. Yes. Yeah. Straight up murder. <laughs> murder in front of a crowd, nonetheless. It. He was not going to give them the satisfaction of of that. The idea of the energy that has to be imprinted in Salem into the earth and the things around it. Well, anywhere a massacre That's, happens, yeah. it, it's just where these innocent lives were taken for no reason. You know, their spirits, if spirits do exist, I believe they do. Not everybody does, but if they do... They're still there. Yeah, and they're the sad, still there. and they're lost because it was not their time. You know, other people forced that to happen. Just, yeah. Ah, it's heartbreaking. Um, the story, clearly we're going to tell you our story that goes with our family name, which is Bassett. Um, whether we be married into the name or on the actual bloodline of it. Um, Sarah Bassett's story is was Sarah Hood Bassett was born August of 1657 in Lynn, Essex County, Massachusetts, to Richard Hood and Mary Newall. See, my mother's name was Mary. Isn't that funny how it all twists around? Mm-hmm. 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 Um, but she did. She later named one of her daughters Mary. In her 18th year, on October 25th, 1675, she married William Bassett Jr., who was the brother of Elizabeth Bassett Pro- Proctor wife of John Proctor. Both John and Elizabeth Proctor were accused and tried for witchcraft. John was hanged on August 19, 1692. Whereas Elizabeth escaped prosecution due to her pregnancy. Their daughter Sarah Proctor was also accused of witchcraft at age 16 on the same day as her aunt. 1957, the daughter Sarah Proctor was also accused of witchcraft at age 16, on the same day as her aunt Sarah Bassett. Thomas Putnam and John Putnam Jr. issued this complaint on May 21st, 1692, exactly one one month after the examination of Mary Warren, John and Elizabeth Proctor's hired girl, who claimed Elizabeth Proctor administered an ointment to her which received from Miss Mrs. Bassett's of Lynn only two days after the Putnam's complaint against Sarah Bassett she was brought to jail in Boston on May 23, 1962, where she remained until her release on December 3, 1692. One month after her release, another indictment was issued for afflicting Mary Walcott, but was returned ignoramus, meaning the charges were ignored due to lack of evidence. Not long after the ordeal was over, Sarah gave birth to a daughter whom she named Deliverance as an ode to her freedom. Sarah Bassett died at age 64. In 1721, while no burial records exist, I have theorized that she may be buried in the western burial ground of Lynn, Massachusetts. This was the only operational burial ground in the town at the time of her death, with the exception of Lynnsfield Burial Ground, opened in 1720, but where the oldest inscription dates only back to 1723. Further evidence that may lend itself to my hypothesis is the fact that Lynn's Western Burial Ground contains 19th century graves supporting Sarah's married name, Bassett, and her mother's maiden name, Newall. Sarah Bassett, but also Sarah Sarah Hood. Mm-hmm. See, I don't know. There's two different stories to the Sarah Bassett. Yeah. It, and, but they link. So this one, this is the Bassett family line. The Bassett family story is an interesting and tragic one. William Bassett Sr. survived the early death of his father and being spirited across the Atlantic at age 11 to become the 17th century war hero during both the King Philip's War and King William's War and a leader of the fledging Lynn Essex County, Massachusetts community. He then lived to see his children, the third generation of Bassett's in this line, absolutely decimated by the 1692 Salem witchcraft hysteria. Thanks go to the Nova Anglo Company of Salem, Essex, County, Massachusetts, whose book, The Salem Witch- <clears throat> Witchcraft Trials, A Documentary History of 1692, provides the unvarnished original court documents in most of the Salem Witchcraft 
hysteria cases, all transcripts of the trial proceedings and other legal documents pertaining to the Salem trials come from this source. Three of Sarah's 12 children were touched by the Salem witch hysteria prosecution. Their oldest daughter, Elizabeth, who married John Proch, see, this is, it, that was a step above. Mm -hmm. That was, yeah. I'd really have to write this down and make a family tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> who married John Proctor, lost her husband and everything they had built together. Thomas Letchford's letter describing how nasty the sheriff was when he took everything from the home is heart-rendering. Two of her children were arrested, tortured, and tried, as she herself was convicted and sentenced to death. Only her pregnancy prevented her execution. By the time she had given birth, the hysteria was over, and she was not hung. William... William Jr.'s wife, Sarah Hood, was also arrested, tortured, and tried for witchcraft. Finally, Sarah Hood was also Sarah Bassett. Mm -hmm. Finally, William Sr. and Sarah's daughter, Mary, wife of Michael D. Rich, was also arrested, tortured, and tried for witchcraft. Why this family was so plagued by this hysteria would make for an interesting investigation. The only clue... I have is William Bassett Sr. signature on a petition against John Hawthorne for serving strong drink. <laughs> what? I believe that either this John Hawthorne or a near relative was the same John Hawthorne who was the one of the Salem hysteria judges. So, yeah, he was he was just mad. Mm -hmm. Heinous as the Salem witch hysteria was, it was also a proverbial moment in colonial history, which changed American um, jurisprudence to this day, especially the case of Elizabeth Bassett and John Proctor. Sheriff George Cohen of Essex County, Massachusetts, was especially sadistic in his attempts to extract confessions from the accused. Again, that goes back to who um, was pressed in these in these. Yelp were a witch. Either way, we're going to die. Let's take the easy way out. Mm -hmm. It was because of the sheriff, George Cohen. Um, in his letter to the Boston clergy, John Proctor describes the hog tying in his teenage son, oh my God, of his teenage son in an attempt by Corin to extract a confession of witchcraft from him. This was apparently not out of the ordinary for Corin. Legend has it that a curse was laid by Giles Corey upon anyone who holds the office of Essex County Sheriff, and enough odd events have befallen those who have done so to keep the legend alive in the 21st century. Regardless, changes to the way juries were chosen, confessions were obtained, and most importantly, that one was innocent until proven guilty instead of the traditional all the way around were implemented after the judicial monastery in addition, the use of spectral evidence and humiliating physical examinations in search of marks of the devil fell out of favor in American courts after this time. It is also worth noting that after 1692, several of the Bassets became Quakers, marrying into known Quaker families, burying in the Friends burying ground and either lack of birth dates for their children or the birth dates are in old style well into the 1700s. Not surprising. They wanted to hide. Mm hmm I almost wanted to cry when I was reading that. Yeah. It's it's like, um, I don't know. It's like, no wonder you, you, you have to go into hiding of fear of what other people might do. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Over just fear. Yeah. Well, back then, they didn't know anything. They needed something to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not fine. I don't laugh because it's funny. The whole thing's just hard. <clears throat> oh, the, the the torture that people went through, the the agony that they had to go through just because of their family name. It uh, it's sad. It is sad. Well, this this just talks about Elizabeth Proctor when she was condemned for witchcraft and not being hung. The same thing that you said. Um, it is. It's it's hard to find. The, the words that you're trying to to say it's you know basically the the bassets were drawn into the witch trials you know mary bassett was imprisoned for the witchcraft on may 
23rd in 1692, and um, the governor of the colony had appointed a commission of judges to hold the court trial, and 14 women and the five men were hung at the Gallows Hill, and she was in prison for, um, for six months, and I think she was imprisoned in Boston, and, you know, basically they're, they call them the Salem Possessed, but were the witches, or was it Salem itself? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it... Why, just Salem area? Yeah. I don't know. Because it was all the families that were connected, and uh, was someone trying to just take out certain families, or was I there an so evil... I believe so Puritans. They, they wanted to... They wanted to, you know, for them, Puritans. the Bible was the law, period. So if you didn't connect with that Bible, or in any shape or form, they were going to take you out. Just, just imagine, though, sitting at home, doing your thing that you did back in 1690s, you know, whatever that was. Apparently it was stirring your cauldron. But, you know, investig- investigators would go door to door. Oh, and, yeah. and all, you know, they'd have townspeople with them. And all they had to do to say you're going to get hung is, she's a witch. He's a witch. She's a witch. And then they'd take you. And it wasn't even just in Salem. It was all the towns around them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't, like, you could be three towns away and you weren't safe. No. Uh, so, so, you sad. know, the what I wonder is why, um, how to... How and why did it carry over from Europe when they were creating exactly what they were trying to escape from in the first place? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As really, we have to thank um, the, the, the Reverend Mather because he's the one that put a stop to it. Yeah, but why did he put a stop to it? Well, I don't know. His Ask wife, his, his wife became accused. Yes, yes, his family and mm-hmm. whatnot, and it was like so. Then uh, there was an issue. He had to turn it around. Yeah. Um, it, it was he want he he wanted to put a stop to the flimsy evidence of it, where it wasn't just a finger pointing. You had to come up with some physical evidence, which is fair, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Not that witches needed to be hung. I'm a fan of witches, <laughs> but back then it was different. Um, yeah. But you can't just go, I don't like you, you're a witch. You know, I... It, well, you can, but back then it meant something different. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it totally did mean something different, and, and it was not okay. And I also got a little bit of, little random facts of that. Um, smallpox. Mm-hmm. Um, right before the witch trials took place, a smallpox outbreak sped, spread through the town of Salem. This only added to the brewing history hysteria obviously uh reverend cotton mather accused martha carrier of starting it through witchcraft calling her a rampant hag a queen of hell though the historical document shows she was merely independent-minded and unsubmissive so she wasn't a witch at all she was just a woman Uh uh-huh is what it was and she wasn't gonna take no shit that's all that was if and, you spoke out, then you're a witch. Yes, and she just happened to get smallpox. But there's the Mather thing again, too. Like he said, it wasn't until his wife, and they wanted to, you know, try trial her as a witch, that he was like, well, wait a minute, and took himself out of the box. See, and that's what happens. You get so caught up because this is what the crowd's doing. Take yourself out of the box. Let's say it was your daughter. Let's say it was your son. Let's say it was your wife, your husband, somebody in your family that you cared about. You're going to think differently. Yeah. And that's what happened. Well, yeah, just here. because of, you know, it's that famous saying, just because people are jumping off the cliff, you don't have to either. But the problem right. was back then, if you weren't thinking like everybody else, you were a witch. Mm-hmm. So you might as well, even if you weren't thinking like them, you better be. Or you well, better be pretending you know, to. People that refused to, to say they were a witch even got it. Yeah. So like I said, you know, it, why not take the easy way if you're going to die anyway? You might as well get, get hung. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take that mm-hmm. time to make 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 it right you know between you and god or whoever whoever your god is and just get it over with because i wouldn't could you imagine trying to pick up the pieces after that yeah like no. the ones that were released you know we were released yeah I'm just you're always hiding in the shadows mm-hmm. it's always going to be a mark on you no matter where you go yes um <clears throat> here's another this is weird the brutal trials 
um, all started because of two girls. Historical record states they began having terrible fit. Oh, it's the terrible fits one, mm-hmm. and that's where it all started. Like seriously, yeah. it, it ah they claimed they were were bewitched. They they probably had some sort of a uh, seizure. Seizure. It was probably a seizure of some short sort. Some short. <laughs> well, it could have been like Shark Week. Uh, exactly. They were I young. Know, right? Like puberty wow. hormones. There was tests created during this. Um, during the trials, many tests were created to determine if someone was a witch or not. In this case, an accused person would have their finger tied to their opposite toe and lowered into some water. If they floated, they were a witch. But if they sank, then they weren't. The danger, of course, was drowning. So either uh, way, you were uh, dead. Because they're the brightest crayons in the boxes, aren't they? Yes. So the outcome was still the same, regardless of which direction or which test they wanted you to take. You were dead either way. They weren't going to take the chances. Well, here, this kind of, like, touches a little bit on, like, Puritan beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, like we just said, with the Puritan people, the Bible was the law. It was taken literally, and sins like adultery and sodomy were punished by death. And during this time, the Puritan faith had been taking some blows. And because there were so few new people that wanted to join the ranks, ministers would constantly preach about falling ranks and the rise of the devil. It was kind of like their... You know, the religion was burning out, so they are trying to find a way to justify the religion and keep it going, because if they didn't, was it, what did they have? They would have to create a whole way new of thinking. And so the same ministers commonly spoke of the virtue of being a good wife, which was all a woman could really hope to be in life. So a woman who, you know, owned her own land, she'd be frowned upon. If she didn't have a lot of children, she was a witch. Mm-hmm. Or if any way it was outspoken or different, witch. was a witch. Because in the meantime, there was many people who actually dabbled in the occult and practiced white magic. Um, the midwives, healers, they did. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't considered evil. Not until the Puritans made it so. It's just, um, you know, simple wives' tales take, like fortune telling, were passed down from generation to generation. Though it wasn't considered um, evil at the time. It became evil the more the ministers tried to make it look like it was the work of the devil. Right. If they couldn't control it, that it was evil. Exactly. It was, it was all because they were losing. Thing. They were losing their way of religion. Yes. And instead of taking and accepting the changes that were happening, people were realizing, you know, I can think for myself. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Yeah. If you thought that way, you you were damned. Yeah. It was witches did not have it easy. And they weren't even witches. Like, they yeah. call it the Salem Witch Trials, but at the same time, it shouldn't be that, because that, <clears throat> I guess I don't even know what the real definition of a witch is, if there really is technically a definition, because that was, I don't even know what I want to say, but that that was people doing what they've always done. Yeah, healers, and yes. work with nature, and, you know, yeah, natural healing, it, That that's the, tr- the definition of a witch, is a natural healer, somebody who connects with nature and wants to heal with... With us, you know, supernatural gifts, psychics, mediums, able they to hurt. connect with that energy. That's what a witch is. They ain't hurt nobody. Yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah. It's Even if you don't believe all in all of it, that's okay. But they're not hurting. They're not physically hurting you. They're, they didn't bring smallpox. That's... What? Really? Yeah. Like, just let it be. Yeah. That, that was a sickness that just... Well, not a sickness. It just was. It, it, yeah. yeah. It was a disease it that was went... a hor- horrible, horrible plague that took over. Like, mm-hmm. it... A witch didn't make it in her cauldron. She didn't sacrifice children in her cauldron as much as I I like to be a witch. <laughs> Only because I'm able to say that it's not bad mm-hmm. how everybody thought it was. And there's still people out there that, oh my god, witches are bad. No. Do your research. It comes yep. down to do your research. Do your due diligence before speaking with somebody that believes in a certain way. And anything. Not even being a witch. Uh, yeah, pagan, wicked, and anything, Catholic, Baptist, Hindu, anything. Research Do, it. Yes, before you want to have a conversation about it. Because there's a history behind it. <sighs> Damn it, Mary. I know. We will hit back on this when Mary comes back from her trip. <laughs> I'll have lots of video. Whatever. Whatever. We don't want to see it. Just kidding. We do. We do. <laughs> um. So then we'll look forward to planning out our trip when we go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we do hope you enjoyed that. We hope that it was uh, some sort of factual. I mean, it, a lot of it's hearsay because it did happen so long ago. But those are the stories that we got and the ones that we wanted to share with you. And again, we will hit back on this again when she comes back and maybe dig a little deeper 
into some yeah, places that, that you get some feelings and stuff on. Mm-hmm. Um, again, look us up on Facebook, Paranormal XL. There's a group. There's a page. Um, also, get your tickets for the live show August 10th. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. That's going to no, be cool. you don't, because we will have footage mm-hmm. from Salem there. We will have pictures. Um, we'll get hooked up with some stuff. We'll probably set up a little Salem area there where we're at. Um, I just think that's super cool. So remember, don't yuck someone else's yum ever. Ever. Oh, wait, I said ever. I know you You're did. You're supposed that's to right. say ever. Oh, man. Whatever. I'm just so mad. <laughs> I, I took ever away from you. That's okay. I'm so mad. <laughs> All right. Well, Mary, Mama Mary, we hope that you have a great trip. I'm going to. Whatever. <laughs> Bye, guys.